The people of Darwin and of the Territory have always wanted a better life, better educational opportunities. Wishes could not always be transformed into reality. In those days, uh, Darwin was some remote place and uh, you didn't really think that it was capable of having a university. In fact, I think they thought we, uh, uh, we all uh, just uh, wrestled crocodiles. But I can understand at that time it was probably thought, well, with that population, how you really, how's this university going to survive? But those of us who lived here, I think, thought, well, of course we'll survive, of course it'll work, of course it'll happen. Um, but I'm aware that um, the federal government may not have been quite so confident about it, but we were. There were people who accused us of... Um you know, uh, wanting, you know, castles in Spain, but it was an absolute necessity. In 1969, architects began the task of designing the Darwin Community College. There were no precedents. This would be first of its kind in Australia. An interim committee, later replaced by this college council, provided the basis for future college operations. Nan Giese was the chairperson. She was the one who moved very hard to get the Darwin Community College concept agreed to by government. A visit to Australia by Prince Philip prompted an official opening of the Darwin Community College on March the 10th, 1974. Now, all I want to do is just to congratulate uh, all those people who had the initiative to get this thing started. If you don't, if people don't express a wish to have something of this sort, it's very unlikely that somebody will just hand it to them. A cyclone is imminent. Does faith begin here amid the ruins of Darwin's community college? Built at a cost of four and a half million dollars and officially opened last year, last March, by Prince Philip. It was a, a slow destruction of an entire city. And so all those dreams of the tertiary education had to be put on a very strong halt. But gradually we all pulled together. And it took a, a year or two to get going after that by using um, factories and uh, office space out at Winelli. So it was an industrial shed that they had converted into, um, into an educational institution and so it had walls that sort of went three quarters of the way up. Um, so if you were in a lecture you could hear people next door. Um, if you went to talk to your lecturer you knew there wasn't a sort of private conversation because there was no sort of no ceiling on the, the, the rooms and so it would sort of noise would float through. At the time it was a an amazing place for us all to go. We'll be forever grateful for that opportunity to study in the Territory. One of the things that happened in those days, because of the lack of a university, was that um, people with university qualifications who were coming up to do various jobs, whether it was doctors, dentists, economists or, or whatever, uh, they wanted their children to have a university education and many of them would move themselves and their family south. We were the first government. We had a feeling that there were things that we had to do. I mean, we got together a lot of young men at the time, all poor old buggers now, who wanted to change things in the Northern Territory. We were trying to get something that would really meet the needs of the Northern Territory with its small, widely spread population. The Territory government and those around, parents, and that, they wanted a proper university. The Territory gets a university next year. It's a university college offering courses and degrees from Queensland Uni, but it comes at a cost. The federal government has refused to fund it and aren't likely to change that decision before 1994, seven years away. 
So despite the fact you're having to cut $40 million off the territory spending, you can afford a university that Commonwealth is not funding? We can't afford not to have one, and, and I'd like to follow up that, uh, that area about the Commonwealth. It's, it's amazing. I just can't understand why we're considered to be inferior people and why it's not considered necessary that territory students uh, should have uh, access to university education. The University College in Darwin has the distinction of being the only non-federally funded university facility in Australia. All speakers mentioned the years of effort to establish a university and most blamed years of frustration on the federal government. Vice-Chancellor of the University of Queensland, Professor Brian Wilson, informed the Canberra bureaucrats they'd be forgotten long before those who established the college. At the end of 1984, um, Ian Tuxworth had become the Chief Minister. Paul Everingham had moved on. And he summons me to his office and asked me if I would become the director of the Darwin Institute of Technology, which was a surprise because I said to him, what's that? And he said, oh, that's the Darwin Community College revamped and you're going to revamp it. The next thing that happened, Dawkins approached the NT government and said, you've got an Institute of Technology, you've got a university college, why don't you merge? Um, but uh, you have to take TAFE with you. That caused a fair amount of consternation in, in the Territory. Um, and it took us about six to nine months to get it together and then whatever the day was... Um, we had the birth of the new institution. The history-making event was NTU because, you know, it was the first university that gave you a real bus to be involved. Where else in Australia could you do that? I think my first leadership challenge when I arrived here was really to get the, the major parties together from the university college and DIT, and then there was a TAFE component as well. The dual sector aspect of this new university really had appeal for me because I'd come out of the TAFE sector myself and had an opportunity to do higher education, and I thought other people should also have that opportunity. I always believed that uh, there's an opportunity for NTU to have a, a much wider focus, not just across the top of Australia and throughout the Northern Territory, but beyond the shores. Under Vice-Chancellor Ron Mackay, the focus of international activities was extended beyond the Asian region to Europe and the USA. Ron worked hard to build NTU in the face of significant funding cuts. That was very difficult for him. Um, so, and of course, it's a difficult issue for the council, what you cut. Of course, ensuring that you are, are attractive to students Year 12 students that were finishing in territory schools, the bulk of them were actually staying and attending uh, NTU. As the university had to grow, it had to figure out some ways to attract a broader range of students. The federal government wanted the institution to be more self-supporting, get more students. A really solid review of the university needed to be done. The question was, who would do it? Uh, it took more than one bottle of red <laughs> for them to uh, persuade me that it was uh, worth considering. It was important, I th thought, to uh, uh, bring together the higher education institutions, Centralian and Menzies and Bachelor. Ken was pretty committed that, that the new institution needed a new name and that name would give it an international resonance, but would also hopefully provide an intellectual framework for the university to operate under. I found out that there was a descendant of Charles Darwin, uh, a great-grandson, so I rang him and said, what if we adopted the name Charles Darwin University? He said, give me a couple of days, I'll talk to the family. So he came back and said that, that there wasn't another university called Charles Darwin and, and the family would be very pleased indeed. So that was a very good plus. I mean, I was trying to get over the idea that there will be change whether you like it or not. It will be continuous whether you like it or not. We don't want to be a dying out species, so we've got to learn to, you know, take a chance, take a, uh, opportunities when they offer. 
if you think of the institutions that were brought together, merged um, to form the new institution, Charles Darwin University, they all had strengths. The main focus at Centralian College was actually the vocational education and training side. Centralian College was again one of those unique dual sector things that only the Territory has really done well. We also had a view about how you would look after the remote communities that were out from Alice Springs. Bringing Centralian into uh, Charles Darwin University was creating opportunities for Central Australia to expand the, the delivery, expand the nature of the courses that could be offered. When I went down to Alice, my last time was sort of my farewell in Alice Springs. Uh, several of the staff who'd been there from the very beginning came up to me and said, well, um, we were ambivalent about it. In fact, we were somewhat scared about it, but we're actually proud to be part of Charles Darwin University. When we changed to Charles Darwin University, we got our own identity. We became global. We were able to cement a place at this university for Indigenous education and for Indigenous people. You just have to look at the numbers that have jumped up, you know. 30% in VET, you know, we're represented there. I think it's about 5% in higher ed, but we've increased there as well. I kept pushing for a pro vice chancellor. I didn't believe that we had a, a voice at the highest level we needed, and I'm very proud of that, you know, and especially that the pro vice chancellor is, is a Darwin boy. The other thing that I'm proud of was the fact that we did put the focus on the research. Our research continues to be highly ranked. And in fact, one of the reasons that over the last few years we've actually received international rankings for the university has been uh, as a result of the great research going on at CDU that has gone on for many, many years. But the recognition of the high impact of our research is now leading to international recognition. I think that's a very important step. The Times Higher Education Rankings were a wonderful opportunity for the university to be seen and profiled uh, on the world stage. And uh, this year to be ranked in the top 100 universities under 50 years of age for a small regional Australian university, that's a great tribute. Most of the people in the world are in the tropic zone. The number of decent universities in the tropic zone are, are very, very few. You can count them on the one hand. They've hastened so much and so well that the reputation of the university is, is uh, astoundingly good. One thing that I have been so enormously impressed by is the commitment of the Northern Territory Government to its university. And I found bipartisan support for the university in a way that I didn't imagine that I would see when I came up here. Uh, I think it's been fascinating how it has absolutely transformed the Northern Territory. I think now, what would we have been like if the university had not, had not happened? It has a huge impact on the gross domestic product. Uh, and if it didn't exist, we would really regret it economically. It has campuses, as I'm sure you're aware, right throughout the Northern Territory. It has campuses in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, it has Menzies School of Health Research that is the leader of its type in the country and all that has been done with a population of 220,000 people. If I sound parochial, it's because I am. Now, in our 25 years as a university institution, we've gone from 400 students to 26,000 students. We've graduated 65,000 graduates. We are increasing our student numbers all the time and, and that's just very exciting, probably because when I go back to the memory of the start and, and the, 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 the concerns that were raised, oh, you've you'll, 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 you'll got to have enough students. And, to, and yet each year we have increased our students. And that's, of course, what we're all about. It was a, a graduation ceremony and uh, a lady was walking across the, the stage uh, and she clearly was a mature age person and very proud of what, she had done. A young voice said, good on your mum. That person probably couldn't have done that without the university, but it meant the university was more than, than a place for young people to go to. It was a place for everybody.
and the enormous potential of Charles Darwin University is such that uh, it will be, it will, uh, uh, I think, outgrow practically any university in Australia in the next 50 years.